Good afternoon. So this is going to be a brief lesson in hand building using clay. I also have water, my modeling tools, uh, surface to protect the table a little bit, just a small sheet of manila paper, and a paper plate. On the back of the paper plate I've written my name and I've gone ahead and put my class period, okay? This is an example of a finished product. It's a Shisa mask, and I'm going to have you make a Shisa mask also. Although I'm not sure this is exactly a Shisa, it kind of gives you the impression of something very ferocious. It's glazed in a single color. You don't have to glaze single color, but that decision comes later on. You see it's done in relief. That means the design rises off the surface, and there is the raw clay in the back, not raw, I'm sorry, bisque clay in the back, the same clay that I'm using today, which is fired once and turns white when it's fired. There's also a place to hang this from on the wall once it's fired, okay? I think we'll worry about the hanging hole later on, not right now. Right now, we're just worried about making this base and hand building on the surface. And what that means is that we're gonna be doing a lot of coiling. Coiling is a way of creating a long, slender cylinder of clay. We'll create some buttons as well. And if you'd like to, we can also use this tool, a wooden stylus. So let's get started. On my paper plate, I'm gonna put a small drop of hand lotion. And the small drop of hand lotion, I'm gonna rub into the plate. It will help as a releasing agent. It's got a little bit of oil in it, so it will help the clay release from the paper plate as the clay is drying, so the clay does not stick to the paper, clay, paper plate. It's a lot like cooking. And here I have two balls of clay, and one of them is about the size of a large egg. And I'm gonna take that ball of clay, make it into a perfect sphere, or closer to it, no longer an egg form, and then just gently on my sheet of manila paper, press it out. And you can see that I'm using the fat part of my hand. It doesn't hurt to roll up your sleeves or pull up your sleeves, and you notice I've taken my wrist watch off and I don't have any jewelry on. So if you do have anything on your fingers or your wrist, you might wanna take those things off. I'm gonna flatten this disc of clay until it's about the thickness of my small finger, my pinky finger, and that would be about right there. And that's about as thick as I wanna make this, no thinner than that, because the clay will begin to shrink as it dries and as it's fired. So that's a nice sturdy disc of clay. And I'm gonna put that right here in the middle of my plate. Now, I'm gonna create some coils and develop the features of this creature. A coil starts as a ball. I'll get these other tools out of the way for the time being. And using the flat part of your hand, the heel of your hand and the ball of your hand, you roll it. And when I'm rolling it, I can't really see it. But what I can do is feel that it's forming a correct coil. It's round, it's even, and it's growing ever and ever longer with more pressure, more rolling. So what I challenge you to do is this, since you can't see the coil forming anyway, close your eyes. My eyes now are closed, and I'm depending on my sense of touch, and I can feel that certain areas of the coil are a little thicker than others. And as I roll, I constantly lift my hand, remember I'm using the flat heel and ball of my hand, and I continue to even out those bigger areas of the coil. Normally, I don't like to roll a coil any thinner than this, no thinner than my pinky, but I think because we're attaching so much of our work to a sturdy base, if you wish to make your coils thinner, you can. Now, what I can do with this coil, I can flatten it. I can mark it with the side of my modeling tool. I can roll it some more by way of experimentation. I don't really see much difference. When I curve it, looks like a piece of bread, I see those uh, slices there, those slight cuts in the surface expanding a little bit, 
your clay has to have enough water in it that it can bend easily without cracking. So that does become an issue later on, which we'll talk about. Now this could be a mouth, this could be a nose. I think I'll break this in two and make this two eyes. So I'm gonna put an eyebrow, rather, there and there. And if I like the position, I have to fasten that those pieces on with slip and score. And what that means is that I've got to come in with my modeling tool, dip into the water, and make some score marks. Lots and lots and lots of score marks. You can see I'm really spending my time creating score marks. And the water helps to create a liquid clay right where the score marks are, a liquid clay called slip. And I'm gonna do more of the same here on the back of this eyebrow. And I'm gonna slip and score periodically, dipping into my water, so I carry just a little water over to the surface, creating just a little bit more slip, liquid clay. So you really do have to slip and score a lot. You cannot do that quickly. But if you take your time and press the two surfaces that are slipped and scored together, they will stay, they won't fall apart. So as this dries, this is good, this will stay. This one, if I leave it here, will eventually fall off. So I do need to slip and score this one as well. So you're getting the idea that the longer you take with this, slipping and scoring, being careful to do a lot of each, the more likely this is to stay in one piece, not fall apart. Now adding glaze later on will help to glue it all together as well. But we cannot forget to slip and score. So I would continue like this for a long time, hand building my features, a little pressure there. If I wanna take the edge of a modeling tool and smooth an area, I can, or adjust areas, I can, or blend one area with another, like I'm doing now with the point of, or the tip of my finger, I can. There's just an awful lot you can do. You can also use your wooden dowel, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. I'm gonna make two balls of clay. There's a ball, and I'm gonna to try to make another small one exactly the same size. Again, I would practice, if I were you, rolling those balls of clay in the flat part of your hand right here, the palm, the ball, the heel of your hand, and because you can't see it, you can close your eyes, make sure it feels correct, if you'd rather, you can roll the clay out here on your manila paper. Those are two options. I'm gonna flatten those just a little bit. I might square one of them off or make one kind of a teardrop shape like that. The other one might be flattened and become more angular, more rectangular or box-like, like this. And then those could be my two eyes. What I'm gonna do now might be a little different. I'm still slipping and scoring and you can see me doing it to both surfaces, carrying some water over each and every time that I create some score marks in order to create some slip at the same time. You have to be patient, you have to do this correctly. So there would be one eye, which I'm gonna develop some more, and here comes the other one. More slipping, more scoring, more slipping, more scoring. I think you're getting the idea that slipping and scoring is very, very important. Here, let me do a little more water, a little more slip. I might go ahead and press my finger in there, use my modeling tool to create an interesting edge right there. Maybe use, it's almost like having another brow or maybe just more like an eyelid right there. That additional pressure does not hurt. Now watch this little fella right here. What I'm gonna do is put him in the palm of my left hand, I'm right-handed, and just with my pointer finger, roll him out. So another way to roll balls of clay would just be in the palm of your hand with a single finger or maybe two fingers. I'm gonna smash him down. I, instead of slipping and scoring, what I might do, just put a little water down, put that on top, and this will help to cement it in. I'm gonna take and drive my wooden stylus through, twist it as I come out, and that little ball with the pupil in it is not gonna fall off. Why? Because I kind of attached it with a little water, a little slip, and also by driving through with that wooden dowel. Here comes another small ball. Now I can tell this is bigger than the last. You see how much bigger? Well, if I press it, it is. And I might change the shape of that. And again, maybe just a little bit of water there, a little slipping and scoring. And then here comes the stylus again, 
just driving through, twisting down, twisting back up again. And you can see already some expression to the face. Now, what about the nose and the mouth? Well, noses are typically very prominent. That means they stick out. So if you wish to make a prominent nose, make it stick out. You don't have to decide on the nose right away. You can play around with different types. Now, right now, I'm gonna go back into my ball shape and I'm gonna roll it here, applying more, the, more pressure on one end than the other so it tapers or gets smaller. So I might do this, not looking very Shisa-like, but I think we can adapt that. I'm gonna go ahead and do some slipping and scoring here, some slipping and scoring here. Don't forget to get extra water when you need to. Little pressure there. I'm gonna come around here and probably take off that top. And I'm gonna take this little extra clay that I have, a little slip and score, a little slip and score, Push that there, take another one, push this here. Remember, I need to put a little water down there if I'm gonna do this with a uh, stylus. This one's a little too small, let's get one that's bigger. So as you pinch pieces off, you gotta figure, you know which ones are too big and which ones are too small, you gotta gauge that. There goes a nostril there. Again, sticking through the stylus helps to fasten those on. There are the two nostrils. Now, I'm not gonna do a mouth, or maybe I will do a mouth now, but I'm gonna work some hair around there with some more coils. I might start with a very small mouth. I might pinch it into shape. I might cake us this and I might cut this. I don't know yet what's gonna happen here. You can see I cut it into two halves. I wonder if I put that there. That looks kind of weird, but I don't mind weird so much. Do you think I should try this way? Let's spread those out instead. That way? Hmm, let's try another one. Now, do you see how I'm experimenting and exploring with poss the possibilities without attaching the pieces together? What if I did this? Looks like he's sticking his tongue out. I kind of like that. If I lowered the mouth down like that and made his tongue stick out, what do you think? I think I'll do it. It's a much smaller mouth than I would have imagined, but that's okay. Do a little slip and score there get some water, do a little slip and score there. There's the top lip of the mouth. Here comes the tongue, which I'd cut down the middle. Was not anticipating or expecting that to be this tongue, but it is. Little slip and score on the back, little slip and score here, where the tongue will attach, and a little pressure to get it to go in. I might take my tool. Now, my tool is very useful because my hand cannot get in there. Now, what am I gonna do with the rest of this? Let's go ahead and build out and around. I'm gonna go ahead and make many, many, many coils like that. A little slip and score on the back. And I think you get the idea. A little slip and score here. You can turn the coil any way you want to because the clay is very plastic. You can do whatever you want. Remember, the coloration of this, when you're done, can be as many colors or as few colors as you like. Now, I did that in my hand. I don't think I like that effect as well as doing it here on the paper. So let me go ahead and roll on the paper. Again, my eyes can be closed as I do this if I want to. I can bend this, see how nice it bends without falling apart. That's indicating that it has plenty of water in there. Slip and score there, slip and score there. Let's try this, let's turn it this way. That's kind of cool. Press that down, those two slipped and scored surfaces. And you can tell that I'm just gonna keep on building out more and more and more with these coils to give the animal much more interest, visual interest, on the sides, all that hair growing up here. Let's curl that one up and around like a little worm. A little slip and score here. A little slip and score here. Get more water, make sure you make some slip there, and press that in, okay? Now, not great, but you can see where I'm going, and I can continue to build out and around. That's not sticking to the plate, which is good, and the plate can even support some of the items that I put out here. Now, probably you'll finish in one day, but if you don't, we can put this in a plastic box with a lid, keep it for a day or two, it won't dry out, and then you can come back 
the second day and finish it up. When you are done with this, it has to go back in a special place to dry. Listen carefully when you're in the classroom to find out exactly where to put this in order for it to dry. All right, now you try.